Greetings from not so sunny Dubai, as you can see. I was actually planning to do my three year anniversary video outside in the hustle and bustle of Dubai, walking down some sunny beach. But sadly, it's actually raining and real thunderstorm in Dubai. But hey, I thought in this case, let's have a sit down video where I really want to have an open unscripted talk with you guys, share with you my wins and losses over the last three years of my YouTube journey. So if you're ready, grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea, whatever works for you. And let's get into it. Now, honestly, it's still hard to imagine that I just passed three years of YouTube. I still remember when I started it exactly three years ago, I told myself when I started off, I'm going to put out one video every single week for one entire year. That was my kind of experiment. I said afterwards, if it doesn't work at all, well, at least I tried and I'll never regret it because I always wanted to be a YouTuber or at least try it, right? And having regret is probably the worst thing. So I said, I'm going to go for it. And guess what? Here I am three years after that, still as passionate as ever about YouTube. Now making actually three videos every single week. So yeah, a lot more work added on top of it, but I've really been enjoying the process. And in total, I made over 276 videos. And yes, while it is a lot of work, I genuinely enjoy the process, but of course it comes with ups and pros, but also like anything in life, right? It also has its downs and some cons to it. And that's why I really want to give you an open and full picture about YouTube because some people will be really excited to try it. And even if you're not planning to make a YouTube channel, maybe you want to start your own business. I hope some of the points I'm sharing with you in this video might resonate you and help you on your own journey to start your own business or really live your own life on your own terms. Right. So let's start off by looking at some of the pros and the benefits and the perks of having your YouTube channel or in fact your own business. Right. But of course, in my case, it mostly comes back to YouTube, which I'm now using to leverage other business opportunities in the future. So overall, guys, if you're thinking about it, I can really tell you, go for it. I mean, it's just amazing. Honestly, I've been loving it so much. It's been so insightful to people I met and so forth. I'll talk about this in a second. But yeah, overall, I really, really love it. I would really recommend that every single person. Now, there's so many different channels and things you can put yourself out to, right? You could become a TikToker, an Instagrammer, a LinkedIn influencer, right? There's so many ways. But I think YouTube still has been existing for so many years. And honestly, I don't see this going away anytime soon. People enjoy long form content, right? It's like when you listen to somebody on a podcast, you build a deeper relationship. If you find somebody on TikTok, you see them once, you might decide to follow them, but then you won't see them ever again because there's so many other creators, everybody fighting for the attention and this very short attention span that people have there. And on YouTube, people watch your content. They're really connecting on a much deeper level. That's why I can really live off my channel with only a very few subscriber base, right? On TikTok, you would need hundreds of thousands, if not millions, to really make substantial money. On YouTube, you can really make money with very little subscribers, which is really one of the huge benefits that I see. And that brings me really to my first point, and that's the financial upside of a YouTube channel. Now, obviously, you know, as much as I love doing these things, you know, ultimately, I want to get paid, right? Especially now that this is kind of my full-time gig in a way, you know, obviously I have an incentive to monetize it. And that's why I'm really transparent and open and comfortable about the fact that I do aim to monetize this channel, right? And of course, I don't want to do it at the detriment of my subscribers. All the value I put out is for free, right? Yes, there are some ads running on this channel. Yes, when I recommend a tool, obviously I get a kickback every time you use it, but at the same time, it also benefits you because there's a special deal to it. And at the same time, it's a win-win scenario. So I do things very transparently and openly. And obviously this channel is all about finance, right? About managing your finances and making more money. So, you know, I should be leading by example and also show you how there are different ways of earning money these days. But yeah, when I look at it overall, of course, when I start started off my YouTube channel, I made nothing until I entered the YouTube partnership program. I started earning a bit of money from all the ads that you see every time you watch a video on YouTube. But now actually my biggest income source is affiliate links. So every time somebody you know, uses my link in the description down below and signs up with one of the services that I use myself, that I get a kickback from it and that makes me money. So that's actually my biggest part. YouTube money is a little bit of that. Then of course I have some personal consultations. So I made a video about this in the past where I share my business model as such. But yeah, in the future, I have many more avenues that I want to explore. And I'll come to this later on in the video where I'll talk to you some future business opportunities. But for now, these are the main income streams. Now, obviously they can fluctuate on a monthly basis. Some months people watch more videos and then you get more ad money. Other times people are not really interested in saving money or investing money and they spend money on other things. And then of course, nobody opens up any brokers or what have you. And then the income might also come down. But you know, touch wood, honestly, so far, months on months, I've seen actually very nice growth. And that's really reassuring to see because I know a lot of YouTubers, the income can really fluctuate. I don't want to have it fluctuating too much. I'd rather have it growing nicely month after month. Right now, I'm obviously not quite there to the salary I had previously. As some of you might know, I used to work as a luxury five-star general manager. So yeah, there you have a really nice package actually, but I'm getting closer. Right now, I would say 
I'm around 70% of that income, which honestly, a few months ago, if you would have told me that, I couldn't even imagine. So now that I'm getting there, it's really amazing. And best of all, there's no ceiling as to how much I can earn, right? I mean, imagine right now, I'm still a tiny, tiny channel and already making that kind of money. If I continue to grow and invest and put out the content and grow the community, I mean, my earning potential will be significantly higher than what I could have earned if I would stay in my job. Yes, you could get a promotion after a while, a little bit of increase, 5, 10, 20%. But overall, you know, there's a certain ceiling, right? As a general manager, you'll never make a million in a year, right? But as a content creator or building your own business, that's definitely possible, right? And that's also my goal to get there. So obviously my first goal is to hit the income that I previously had. And then the next goal after that, of course, would be to reach an even higher income level, so to say. In hindsight, I'm so glad that I started it while I was still employed because, you know, it's very difficult to leave a comfortable, well-paid job if you have no income, right? You go from 100% of your income to 0%. I mean, you think twice about it, especially if you have a family, you later on in your life, it's really difficult. Yes, if you're early on and your income is very little anyways, and you have a bit of savings, you might go for it. But the older you get, the bigger your family starts getting, it's gonna get hard. So that way, by having built up this channel while I was still employed, after work, on the weekends, I could get to an income level where at least it covered my living expenses. So that way, even if I wouldn't earn significantly more, I wouldn't have to use my savings to live. That for me was the point where I said, okay, I feel comfortable really trying to pursue and go heavy on this. So yeah, that's something I really recommend you in any business endeavor that you plan to go, start early before you leave the comfort zone so you know you have something to rely on because otherwise you get unnecessary stress and after six months, it may not take off the way you would have hoped for and then you might just abandon it altogether and move on and in the end, you might regret it. And that's why I'm a big fan of pursuing a side hustle while you're still employed. And apart from the financial benefit, one of the biggest benefits that I really see out of this whole transition into my own business and being a content creator and entrepreneur is the ability to have location and time freedom. I mean, I can choose wherever I wanna work, whenever I wanna work, you know? I like to work on the weekends, but at the same time, I like to take off on Tuesday afternoon and go to a nice beach club in Dubai. I could never do this previously, right? If I go on holiday, I would always have to write to the corporate office, to the owners and say, can I go? Is it okay? Is it fine? After a while, you think to yourself, I need to ask for permission to go somewhere and relax. I just found it really weird. And now I don't have to ask anyone. I don't have to answer to anyone. Well, maybe except for my wife. But other than that, I really have freedom where I want to live, where I want to travel to, and whenever I want to do that, right? And that's just so incredible. The financial freedom will come eventually. If I continue working hard, I know I'm going to get there. Right now, I don't have it. I'll be honest, right? That's something I'm thriving towards. But having those two location, freedom, independence, I mean, it's just incredible. Now, another win for me personally is, of course, the subscriber count. Obviously, I wish I would be sitting here right now having 100,000 subscribers, right? But at the same time, when I look at the growth, I mean, the first year, I was at around 1,100 after one year of YouTube. So really, not that many. And that was really a lot of effort that went into it. Now, on the second year anniversary, I just checked, I had around 4,600 subscribers. So from one year to two years, not a major growth, but still a nice accelerated growth. Now, after three years, we are now at around 14,600. That's another 10,000 subscribers on top of last year, right? So really start seeing exponential growth. So my goal is, of course, to continue that exponential growth. So let's make a pact over here. Next time I'm going to do this for my four year anniversary, I aim to have 50,000 subscribers. Now, obviously, I cannot impact that if I hit the number or not. But what I can impact is how much content I put out and the quality of the content. If it's good quality and quantity over time, I think the rest will take care of itself. So that's my goal. Let's see if it will come true. But beyond just the subscriber number, which is great to see, it's really the people behind it, you know, and I get some amazing messages on Instagram, on my YouTube comments, on email, you know, really people thanking me that because of me and my channel, they started investing and taking their finances serious. And honestly, it's just so unbelievable that I can impact people from around the world, helping them with their money, start growing their net worth and take this thing serious. Because honestly, in many parts of the world, money is still such a taboo topic, right? Even with friends and family, you know, really talk about it. If I can be your friend and guide in helping you to deal better with your money, I mean, it's just so rewarding. And I get some of the sweetest and kindest comments and that's really what fuels me, right? The financial aspect is amazing. I love it and honestly, I need it also to survive and continue. But at the same time, you know, getting that raw, authentic, positive feedback, I mean, it just fills my heart and really makes my day whenever I read it. So really appreciate all of you who support the channel, who comment, who like, who subscribe. It means the world to me. And it's so cool. A while ago, actually in Dubai, I was walking down the street and I was recognized by one subscriber. He said, hi, guy, I follow you on YouTube. I was like, oh my God, it felt really amazing, right? And again, I'm still a tiny, tiny channel. But yeah, that's amazing. I love it. I mean, I have so many subscribers from Portugal, for example, right? So I really think, you know, one day I should do a subscriber meetup in Portugal. I don't know. I don't speak Portuguese. I haven't been there forever. 
but somehow a lot of Portuguese follow the channel. My biggest subscriber base is still, of course, American, UK, a lot of European focus, but I also have people from Venezuela writing me, same as from China, Vietnam, and Indonesia. So really a global community, and that's so amazing, and I absolutely love it. And one more thing I'm really happy about now at my three-year anniversary is now everybody knows about it, because for a while I really kept it for myself, and I never talked to anyone about it only to my wife, literally nobody else. And she even asked me, I can share your channel. It will really help your visibility. And I would say, no, I really want to keep it low profile. I want only people to discover it organically by themselves. And I always felt uncomfortable, right? Because I was still employed. I thought, hmm, what will people think when they see my channel? You know, that's not aligned with your brand values as a luxury general manager, and you shouldn't be doing these things. But now that I left my job, I feel so liberated because I don't have to care anymore. And honestly, I don't, right? If you judge me for it and you think it's not the right thing, well, that's on you because ultimately I'm living my own life and I'm following my passion and I see results. If you don't like it, well, that's your loss. But for me, it's really amazing to be able to change the industry and build up something new and keep on developing myself because in my previous job, I kind of felt I reached a ceiling. I didn't really see, you know, much progression anymore and development. I was kind of doing the same old things, right? But now I'm really out of my comfort zone and I have to learn so many things and I absolutely love it. That's what's driving me. But the hardest part to communicate that was actually to my family. Everybody else in the end I don't really care I know what I'm doing I can see the success and that's amazing but for my family I was still a little bit reluctant to tell them because obviously you know they supported me in my studies and what have you and they've been really you know supportive of my career so here I was really worried what they will think and so on but in the end I also thought to myself you know if they love me as their son you know they will love me if I followed my passion and see success with it. And honestly, it was much easier than I expected it. Yes, they had a few questions. How do you monetize? How do you do this? But now after a few months into doing this full time, they see that I'm living quite comfortable from it and they feel supported. And honestly, that's so nice. So now the cat is out of bag, everybody knows. And yeah, it's just really liberating to have that. And the last point, what I really like about it is, of course, times get tough, right? There's really some difficult periods and sometimes you don't get the views on a video that you would hope to, even though you spent hours on there, or some deal that you were discussing and close to signing in the end didn't go through. So there's always ups and downs, but overall in the end, when I think about it, and I put so much work in it and it doesn't work or it does work, I know I'm doing it for myself, for my own business, right? Because previously I would have sleepless nights, I constantly think about problems. And in the end, those problems I'm fixing for somebody else because I was just an employee, right? I would be so dedicated for that problem and that person to help them fix their problems. But in the end, it really didn't make a difference because I would still get my salary if it was a successful month or not, right? Here, I'm doing it for myself, for my own business, hopefully one day for a team as well, that'd be cool. But yeah, it's for myself. So I really love that, that what you put in, you can lay down, take out, way more even, right? It's like a bank account. The more you put in, the more you take out. In a job, you put in more, you put in less. In the end, you're still most likely gonna keep your job unless you're not putting anything into the bank account. Eventually, the employer might notice that and let you go, but you can get by by just doing average, right? If you do average in your own job, well, it's gonna show at the end of the month for sure. But now let's talk about some of the things that are not really going that well and things that I would really need to work on going forward. Now, the first one is that sometimes things are just very slow. I just mentioned to you about, for example, subscriber growth. Now, I see the growth over time, but of course, I want things to happen faster, right? But it's not in my control. Yes, I could put out five videos a week, but at the same time, you know, it may or may not grow the channel even more. I've seen channels that only put out once a week and they grow thousands of people every single day. And it's just so frustrating. Sometimes I look at other YouTubers and there's some amazing ones, but some of them, I think the content is just average. And at the same time, they're growing like crazy. And then I catch myself comparing to them and almost feeling a bit jealous. But then I kind of rewire myself and think, well, good for them. What can I learn from that to implement for my channel? If it works for them, maybe it can work for me as well. So I try to reframe these things because it's very important because jealousy always holds you back, right? So I think that's one thing that you can only push it to a certain extent, but I'm conscious of it and I'm trying to really focus on the things that I can control. The outcome will be what it will be. Another point, sometimes I really question myself is the kind of content I'm putting out, right? Because obviously I really talk mostly about finances and investing and all things money related, but that's kind of a niche in itself, but at the same time, it's still a huge niche, right? Because I could be talking about how to make money, all these side hustles. I could be talking about how to save money, budgeting and all these different things. You could talk about investing into real estate, into stocks, dividends, ETFs, crypto, and all these are quite different, right? It's sometimes really hard to cater to a lot of different people. And I also have, you know, some beginners who are just starting off and trying to buy their first stock. On the other hand, I have sometimes some crypto bros who ask me all different kinds of coins and what I think about it. It's really difficult to bring everything together. But again, ultimately I have to stick to myself. I'm kind of documenting my own journey. So I kind of talk about the things that I do and like myself. It's impossible to please everybody. And I also want to be quite honest. You know, people ask me to review certain platforms that I don't use myself. And I might look into it. If I like it, I might consider. But if I don't like it, 
I will not review it. The same with some investments, right? Certain meme coins. I just don't believe in it. So that's why I want to talk about it. So I think, yeah, it's sometimes a little bit hard to stay focused, but at the same time, I think overall my niche is clear. Obviously in this channel, I'll not be talking about cooking or gardening. So I'm really specific on my niche. And within the niche, I have a lot of different topics that I can talk about. Now, another thing that I should be doing much more of to further grow the channel, I know it would really help, is short form content. Now I do it once in a while, you know, some Instagram reels, and then I repurpose them here on YouTube shorts. But overall, I just don't enjoy watching them because for me it's really just a time drag to keep on scrolling so I don't watch any Instagram reels honestly and YouTube shorts as well so that's why I also don't like making them but at the same time I know that doing them could reach a whole new audience that later on could find my long-form YouTube content. I like long-form content to connect better with the audience to really get a point across right. I mean if you talk about investing it's really hard to put it into a 15 seconds Instagram reel right so that's why I'm not a big fan of it but I know I should be doing a better job with it. Still my main focus will always be on YouTube long-form content but I'll try to integrate some more short form content here and there. By the way, guys, look at this weather. I mean, unbelievable. It's literally afternoon and it's pitch black outside. It's just absolutely crazy. Another point I really struggle with at times is the overwhelm, because once again, it goes back to I'm a one man show right now, right? I'm not planning to hire any team members anytime soon. Hopefully as the channel grows, and the income grows as well, I might decide to. But at the moment, I quite enjoy being a one-man show and kind of managing the whole process. But at the same time, that also comes with a certain overwhelm at times because, you know, making these videos takes time. Then writing a newsletter takes time. Making short-form content, staying in touch with my affiliate partners to manage new projects, coming up with new video ideas, replying to comments. Right now, I'm in the process of setting up my own online community. There's so many aspects to it. Right now, I'm definitely working more than I previously did in terms of total hours. I do enjoy it, so I don't really count the hours. I love it. I work on weekends, weekdays, mornings, evenings, I don't care. At times, it's really the overwhelm because you could spend your time on so many things. So you really have to sometimes zone out and think, okay, where can I spend my time on that creates the biggest ripple effect, right? I would have my video ideas in Apple Notes, then I would have some to-dos in my Task Manager app, then I would have some other things on my Google Calendar. That was all flying around and I wouldn't have one big picture of what's happening. So now recently, I actually bought a Notion template for quite a bit of money, but hopefully that will really force me to start using Notion more, which can basically serve as your second brain. It's an amazing tool. It can do so many things. So that's why sometimes it's a bit overwhelming, but I hope really embracing that for all my content, my tasks and all different things, even my private life to manage it all in one tool would be amazing. And hopefully that will streamline a little bit more my workflows. And lastly, I would say, I still have a little bit of a regret. Not a big one because eventually I did start my YouTube channel, but in a way, sometimes I ask myself, what if I started 10 years ago, right? I would be sitting here on my 10 year YouTube anniversary. Where could the channel have been already? Because of course, you know, back in the day, it was arguably easier to grow a YouTube channel, especially in finance, right? There was hardly any finance people. Right now, there's so many finance people out there. In general, more people coming to YouTube and other channels. Overall, people going to social media. So you know, sometimes I think, oh my God, if only I started earlier. But at the same time, whenever I do have these thoughts, I also think to myself, well, I'm glad I did start because otherwise, if I didn't start, I could potentially be sitting right now on my very first video today and I would be missing three years. So I think there's no perfect time. The best time is today. Same as investing, right? Some people say, if only I started investing 10 years ago. Yeah, if only, that would have been great. If I bought Bitcoin five years ago, I could be chilling on my private island somewhere. But you know, you live and you learn. When in doubt, just start and see where it takes you. So with this, let's talk about the next steps for my channel and my business at large. I know more than ever that I want to continue this and YouTube is going to be the main driver of my channel and my business going forward. I know this way I can grow my audience, get new people in, engage with the existing audience, and from there start building other business ventures. I really see the potential in that. And I know that YouTube is a marathon, not a sprint. So that's why I'm not sitting here and saying, I'm gonna have 100,000 subscribers in the next year or so. I'm really gonna be realistic. If it's 30,000, I'm equally happy. Ultimately, I can control the output. Who chooses to follow or not, it's not up to me. But I really believe in the power and value and an online community can really offer. I'm really committed to it for the long term. I'm not going away, that I can tell you. And I really believe, as you know, into compounding growth. Same like investing, you know, do things over time. In the beginning, it might be a little bit slow. When people say, oh, you don't see many views in the video, don't you feel bad? No, because I know every video I put out is digital real estate. These are little lead magnets that people will discover eventually. And the more I put out, there's more chances for it to discover and they will start compounding over time. And that's what I've been seeing with my subscribers over time, with my views over time, with my financial success over time. And I'm still early on, right? I remember the first year getting over 10,000 views in a month was like incredible. Now every month I'm well over 100,000 views per month, right? And people only look at my last video, but actually my old videos still getting views, right? So a lot of my videos are picked up by the algorithm many months later on or found in search. So I don't have these viral videos that get crazy views immediately. But if you look for something specific like interactive brokers, Revolut, Trading 2 on 2, most of my videos ranking at the top. So when they look for it, 
they find my videos, they find the solution, they might end up using my link and it will bring revenue to me and it will benefit them and hopefully bring them in as a subscriber to the community. And that's why I really focus on growing my online community, especially obviously here on YouTube. Then of course, I will continue growing my Instagram. I'm really trying to be more active over there. So if you're not following me over on Instagram yet, I'll share daily stories over there and more also from my private life. So yeah, welcome to follow along. And lastly, of course, my email newsletter, which actually I started too late, is another regret potentially, but now I'm really serious about it. I send it out once a week. It's called Smart Money Moves. It's really easy to read and digestible financial advice. So definitely check it out. You're not going to regret it. And lastly, I want to focus on building additional income streams. In the future, I'm going to have my first online course. I think that would be very exciting since a lot of you have been asking me about that. So I want to have that for a kind of structured learning approach. But more immediately, I will launch my own Smart Money Club online community. I'm really excited about it. I think it will really bring like-minded people together to really have the community feel and exchange. We're going to have different topics over there on crypto, dividends, stocks, real estate, what have you. So I think everybody will feel heard, understood, and it will really be a group and community of like-minded, positive and finance and investing, money driven and oriented people. I'll share more about it in the near future, but definitely a project I'm super excited about. And there we are. None of this would have been possible without you. So I really appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for watching, for subscribing, for liking, for commenting. It really means the world to me. And I always realize that the subscriber is not just a number, but an actual human being behind the screen. So don't be stranger. Say hi in the comments. Let me know from where you're watching. Love to learn more about you. Here's to the next three years ahead. Let's do this. And as always, stay healthy, get wealthy, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.